Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a precocious little boy who loved his family and friends, but could never truly ignore his not-so-secret passion. And so, as fate dictated, there was always a space, or twelve, in his heart just for his games. And so here we are, at the end of Season 3, with Benji's Top 100 Games of All Time. 100 on Mars. Holy buckwheat, there's no warming up in this segment. Deep, strategic, almost simulation-like gameplay where you eke out resources from the planet's surface, shuttle back and forth with a space station in orbit with only certain actions available to you dependent on where you are. This combines all sorts of mechanics to make sweet gravy. 99. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition this is what the ultimate in thematic dungeon crawling looks like. Remade from the ground up with an app to help you do the mechanical heavy lifting, the investigating, the storytelling and even the combat all play a part in making this an absolutely immersive gameplay experience. 98. Bushido this pseudo-fantasy skirmish miniature war game set in feudal Japan doesn't get a great deal of fanfare, but its predominantly objective-based missions sees you battling your opponent with opposed check dice rolls, where you decide how many dice you put into attack, defense, and special abilities. Great design. 97. Mage Wars Academy takes a lot of what Magic the Gathering brings to dueling card games, removes the need to sell organs, and still retains the bulk of the fun. You also bring a whole spellbook that acts as your deck. Using your available mana to play creatures, enchantments, and spells to slap your opponent with. Neat and tidy. 96. Merchant's Cove It's really just a game about making goods and then flogging them for the most moony, which means the core rules are nice and light, but each player has their very own asymmetrical way of doing this, so whichever merchant you control will see you playing your own little game and meeting everyone else at market. 95. Teotihuacan City of Gods Stretches your brain with its name, but also in the choices you make with your workforce of dice. Yep, you have employees made of dice going round and round the board. Making one of two action choices each time you move, all in the pursuit of making this little pre-Columbian civilization prosper. 94. It's a Wonderful World this traditional pick and pass drafting game where you build your engine to construct all sorts of sites and attractions subtly grew on me as I realised how focused you need to be with your choices so you could min-max your engine at the end of each turn. Not groundbreaking, but very rewarding. 93. Heroes of Land, Air and Sea is 4x in a cardboard box, and slightly shorter and less complex than its contemporaries. Set in a Humies, Orcsies, Elveses and Dwarveses world where you can pretty much do what you want. Be militaristic, be exploratory, play the economic game. Just don't tell anyone that the world is flat. Shh. 92. Battle Law 2nd Edition is the game you play if large scale miniature war games scare you and you need some cosy board game rules to suck at the tea of. And it's got hexes. Oh my god, what can't it do? Seriously, innovative setup and deployment and neat movement and combat rules add up to one highly respectable game. 91. Viticulture is pure worker placement where you're running your own vineyard, planting the vines, making the grapes, getting pissed at lunch, selling what you don't drink to eager consumers, and generally having to make the absolute most of every single worker placement throughout. This is vanilla meeple placement perfected. 90. Unfair is called that because apparently theme park owners delight in industrial sabotage, but really the take that elements are fairly minor. What this leaves you with is a very well produced tableau building and set collection game that sees you crafting your own perfect little fun fair. Enough said. 
89, Age of War. A game about chucking lots and lots and lots of dice, and then doing it again. Covering up rows of symbols that represent military combatants in feudal Japan looking to be the most dominant clan. Sometimes you just need a filler game when you can make that sweet sound of cubes rolling across the table. 88 Summoner Wars is kind of like a miniature war game that's been flattened in like a press and turned into cardboard. But although the movement and combat is fairly straightforward, my oh my did they go to town on making each of the factions interesting, both thematically but unique in playstyle as well. 87 Maracaibo what I really like about this Euro is that I can mosey around the Caribbean at my own pace, albeit in a clockwise manner. Picking up quests, getting into tussles on behalf of various nations, upgrading my boat and generally playing a bunch of cards from my hand. Just quality heavyweight fare. 86 Targi really is a quite special little two player only worker placement game. Using a 5x5 grid where you pick your X and your Y coordinates with two meeples and do the actions you land on. Providing a different take on placement blocking, the rest is gaining resources, playing cards and seeing who wins. 85 One Deck Dungeon this, as far as I'm concerned, is the little small box game that could. Here you're rolling and manipulating dice representing your character's skills and expertise that you then upgrade as you go. Job one then is to cover symbols on cards representing minions and traps you encounter until the big boss battle at the end. 84 King of Tokyo is dumb, stupid, fun in a box. The pitch is basically this. We're going to take Yahtzee dice rolling, give it a spit and a polish, and then place big hulking kaijus in and around Tokyo and let them duke it out for dominance. Being the last big ugly standing or ducking and diving your way to a points victory is so much fun. 83 Eldritch Horror One of the few games that sets the Cthulhu mythos on the world stage. A variety of old gods are the antagonist, and you are the solution in this cooperative point-to-point -point movement and skill check game that will, I repeat, will require full cooperation, skill, and a smattering of luck to succeed. 82. Jamaica Whilst this isn't a typical racing game, nope, you've got combat and resource management to keep you occupied as well, but having to select two movement actions each round, some forwards, some backwards, will generally see you taking the rough with the smooth. Delightful. 81. Sleeping Gods is the latest hotness in the choose your own adventure verse and you know it's one of the trickiest things knowing what mechanics to combine with storytelling games like this and here the skill checks that require keywords you pick up as you go and your crew's skill set pitches it just right so you feel immersed in the decisions you make. 80 Fantasy Realms is what happens if you take a rummy-esque game and try and mix and match all the cards in your hand to combo off with each other to give you the most points. X goes with Y but not with Z means you'll be drafting cards to ensure that each has its own place in your hand. This is what old school fun feels like. 79 Lords of Hellas is a game not shy of intertwining mechanics and beautiful minis. You can literally play this as an area control game, a let's go fight other nations game, a hunt mythical creatures game, take your pick. It's a highly ambitious, asymmetrical game that hits more than it misses. 78. Unmatched has fairly old school point to point movement and combat that revolves around playing a better card than your opponent, but the real strength of the game lies in the absolutely blinding characters you can play, each one having its own deck and strengths and weaknesses. 77 Warhammer 40,000 Conquest Incorporating area control elements into a deck construction game is no mean feat but it's back and forth tussle of how much you want to commit to an engagement is what makes this game great. 
Yes, this living card game ain't coming back, but what the tuppany do I care, it's still great fun getting it to the table. And 76, Horrified. So, you take a pinch of Universal Monsters and throw it into a beautifully produced pick-up-and-deliver saucepan. Et voila. The beauty of this hideous creation is not its throwbacks mechanics so much as its replayability and variable AI opponents that go full theme and give you a set of call objectives and win conditions. And that there concludes this air segment of Benji's bestest games of all time. Be sure to check back next time as I count from 75 to 51. Alas, I have been the voice in your head, and this video has ended. <laughs>